Since I started making these videos, a lot of my viewers are A-level students and by far the most common questions I get asked by these A-level students are about A-level chemistry. So today I'm going to be answering the most commonly asked questions I get from A-level students who are studying chemistry, as well as giving you all my advice and guidance from my experience. This video is going to be packed with top tips for everything you need to know to ensure you get those top grades, those A's and stars in A-level chemistry, whether your aim is to study medicine or not. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Hiba and I've just finished studying medicine at the University of Manchester. In this video, all the points that I'm going to be talking about are timestamps, so feel free to just click around to whatever is most relevant to you and what you actually want to hear the answer to. So I'm just going to get straight into it with the by far most commonly asked question that I get by A-level students and that is do you need to study chemistry to get into medicine and the answer to that is it depends. Back when I was applying to medical school it was rare that you could get into medicine without having done A-level chemistry. It was a requirement of almost all universities. However since my time at medical school a lot of these requirements have changed and more and more universities stopped making it mandatory that you have to do A-level chemistry in order to apply to study medicine. Currently there are a few universities that will say you do need A-level chemistry as a must but actually the vast majority of universities now have changed their requirements so that you don't have to do A-level chemistry but instead they'll say you have to do at least two sciences at A-level and those can be any of maths, biology, chemistry, physics. You can definitely get into medicine without having studied A-level at chemistry and if you really 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 don't want to study chemistry don't worry you don't have to be forced into it. I would just say look up the universities that you are interested in. All universities will have a very clear and fairly short um, entry requirements page which you can quickly take a couple of minutes to read through and you'll know um, what your options are looking like if you don't want to study A-level chemistry. Following on from that another question I get asked so much is that if I don't study A-level chemistry, will I be disadvantaged when I'm studying medicine? Slash, is there a lot of chemistry in medicine? And the answer to that question is surprisingly, there is literally no chemistry in medicine. In that obviously, like, obviously we're taught about um, how medications work and things like that. But I think when most people are asking me this question, they're asking it from the sense of, do we do like, a lot of the same things in medicine that you learn about in chemistry like do we do equations and things like that and the answer to that is no there's absolutely none of that in medicine and whenever anyone asks me this in person i will always say that i think they used to have it mandatory because of how little chemistry there actually is in medicine so they want you to have already done that before you actually start the medicine course because there's no going over all of that again so if you are doing chemistry and you're a bit like oh i don't know i don't want to like you know carry on doing this then you don't have to worry you will be saying bye to a lot of the chemistry when you start medicine unless if further down in your career you want to specialize in um, you know pharmaceuticals or something like that what I would say is that you would be disadvantaged if you didn't do biology rather than chemistry which is weird because in the past all universities made chemistry the mandatory A level whereas biology wasn't mandatory and I think it should be the other way around I think people who didn't do biology at A level um, were definitely at a disadvantage because in the first and second year especially there were so many things that we were taught about that were already introduced to us through A level biology and um, that we already knew about and those students that hadn't done A level biology had a lot of catching up to do. Now I'm going to go into um, another very very common question that I always get commented on all my videos um, that I get DMs about and that is how to revise for A-level chemistry in specific. What's the best way to revise so that you can ensure you get good grades in your exams? So there's a few things here that I'm going to talk about. The first thing I would say is you need to be familiar with the mark scheme that is used to mark chemistry exams for your exam board. You are literally setting yourself up for failure if there's literally a guide out there, freely available for you to access on the internet, which tells you 
this is how we're going to give you the marks in your exam and you're not using it. I think to do well in your chemistry exam, it's really important that you have a good understanding of how and where the marks are being allocated to you, whether or not you need to memorize definitions word for word, or if you can just write them down. For example, I remember my exam board that I sat, you had to write the definitions down word for word even if you wrote down a correct definition in your exam but it it wasn't word for word and therefore it didn't include the keywords that they were looking for you would not get the marks even though your answer was correct so what i'm trying to get at is no matter how good of an understanding you have of concepts in chemistry if you don't do key things in your exam you can miss marks and that is why you need to be familiar with the mark scheme the next thing i would say is every single person has a different way of revising some things work for some people and for other people they don't i can't personally sit here and tell you this is what you should do and this is what you shouldn't do because i don't personally know you i don't know what works best for your um your brain and how you pick things up and how you remember things. But what I would say as a whole is because of the nature of the subject of chemistry and the way the exam works, you have to do past papers. No matter what else you're doing on the side, whether you want to write notes, whether you want to make flashcards, whether, whatever it is that works for you, you do that. But you must also be doing past papers at the same time. To do well in the chemistry exams, you need that repetition of doing the past paper questions again and again and again and writing out the same equations, same mechanisms again and again. Doing past papers is going to allow you to spot patterns that are commonly used in exam questions time and time again. You'll come to realise how many questions are literally just recycled with the numbers change but the exact same um, question. And without doing past papers, you're not going to be able to have that repetition. You're not going to be able to spot the pattern when it comes up in the real exam. So do what you like. If there's something you've found that's working for you, that's fine, but do not neglect those past papers. Something I get asked a lot again is how soon should I start revising for my exam? And the answer that I would always give is make sure you are engaging from the very start of the year. From day one, make sure you are taking your revision seriously. I'm not saying that go completely full on from day one and act like the exam is tomorrow, but during your A-levels, you're going to be having tests every couple of weeks you're going to be obviously given homework make sure you are treating those tests seriously that homework seriously don't neglect it don't do it the morning that it's meant to be handed in um when it comes to tests always prepare and study and give those as if they are the real thing. While I'm not here to tell you do this many hours per day or per week, what I will say is make sure you're staying engaged from the start. Treat it as a marathon and not a sprint and you will be less tired at the end. Um, also hand in hand with the mark scheme thing is be familiar with like the entire syllabus and the curriculum. If you find out which exam board you're going to be sitting, you can literally go on their website or in their textbook and just go through all of the topics that could potentially come up in your exam. Knowing you have, for example, 35 topics to go through in the year, you can create a plan for how you're going to get through each of those topics instead of being oblivious to what you have to cover and risk missing things out that could come up in your exam. Similar to this, I think you need a revision timetable. I know there are so many people out there that will be like, oh, I don't need a revision timetable. Like it doesn't work for me. And I used to be one of them. I put it off for the longest time ever. Let me tell you, like I hated the thought of sitting down and making a timetable for the next couple months. There was just so much friction between me having that thought and me doing it. Like I just did not want to make a timetable. But honestly, it took about 15 minutes and I felt like a huge weight and burden off my shoulders when I had done that. Because honestly, if you think about it, you cannot be revising obliviously with no end in sight. Like you need to have a proper visualization of what is the end goal. It's all well and good knowing the date of your exam, but you are right now here in the present and your exam is some date in the far future. You need to have an actual visual aid to help you see exactly how many days lie between today and your exam. And what a timetable will do is allow you to accurately see how many days you can spend on one topic and whether or not you'll be able to cover all the topics by the time the exam comes. If you're one of the people that don't make a timetable and 
you take each day as it comes um you'll find that you've spent way too long on some things not enough time on uh, on other things you haven't had enough time to fit these last four topics in you have to be organized and you have to have some st sort of structure and obviously don't go too intense like keep it realistic i used to block off time for like my favorite tv show that i know is going to come on at nine o'clock every day the next piece of advice that i am going to give is to use pre-written notes so in chemistry the type of questions that you get are ones that require practice 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 chemistry is one of those subjects where you want to maximize the amount of time you spend doing practice questions rather than writing out notes. Sometimes it can also be a bit confusing, especially in chemistry, what you need to put into your notes and what is just unnecessary information. So this means not only is there a significant time sacrifice in making notes for chemistry, but also it can just be a bit stressful having to triple, quadruple check the mark scheme or the syllabus to make sure you haven't missed anything out. Having said that though, it is important to have a good quality set of notes to study with. If you've watched any of my other videos, I always speak about how much I love having concise notes instead of using like a big fat textbook with lots of unnecessary and distracting information. So this is where pre-written notes come in and my top recommendation would be to use chemistry flash notes. These are the highest quality condensed chemistry revision notes that I have personally come across and they were created by an experienced chemistry tutor who has already led so many students to success in chemistry to help all students who are studying A-level chemistry to revise in the best way possible and the most effective way possible. So these two books are an example that I was very kindly sent to take a look at and they are one of the many versions of the book that are available depending on which exam board you're sitting. These books have been carefully crafted by an A-level chemistry tutor who has 18 years of experience in teaching chemistry and they know what the most important things to know for the exams are and the best way to explain it so that you can develop a really solid understanding of all the topics in your exam. These books break all the topics down to just a couple of pages of what you actually need to know and includes all the definitions and equations that you might be tested on. They're the perfect tool to give you a solid foundation to base all of your exam practice off and to allow you to understand all the concepts easily. As I mentioned, these books are also specific to the exam board that you're sitting and also specific to the updated syllabus of every exam. So it means you're going to have top quality, ready-made notes by a chemistry tutor that are also going to be specific to your exam's mark scheme. So remember all that advice about making sure you're familiar with the mark scheme. This is going to be an amazing tool that's going to make sure you're going in the right direction at all times. These books are so good, they've been stocked in so many school libraries as well, so that kind of speaks for itself. Not only are they recommended by schools themselves, but also so many students that have benefited from these books and also parents who can see how much their children have benefited. So if you would like to purchase one of these, which I highly recommend you do if you're after those top grades, they're available in this lovely paperback form which I have here, but there are also people PDF versions available if you'd prefer to have them online and study digitally. If you are interested in getting the ebook instead, you can use my code, which is HIBA33, on their website, which is www.alevelchemistryrevision.co.uk, which will get you 33% off the price of the ebook. And I think that's a fantastic offer because their books are already priced at a fraction of the price of normal textbooks. And not only that, but 10% of their profits are also donated to charity. I have read through these books and I can honestly say that if you have one of these, you're already halfway there to getting top grades because the quality of this book is honestly better than the textbooks you find in your classes. Remember to use my code HIBA33 at alevelchemistryrevision.co.uk to save 33% on your ebook. So just the last couple of things I want to talk about now is firstly, what YouTube videos. I think YouTube is such a fantastic resource for learning anything. Chemistry is one of those subjects where things are very visual, lots of the mechanisms and things that you have to draw or the equations and things and for a lot of the concepts you need to see them play out for you to understand what it means. If you're ever stuck, give it a search on YouTube. You're bound to find someone who is able to 
explain things in a way that you're able to understand. And just coming off that last point, if you want to do well in A-level chemistry, don't be afraid to ask for help. Be the person that does stay behind in class and takes up that offer of having a one-to-one -one with the teacher for five minutes. Don't be that person who isn't really sure about what's being talked about in class, but is afraid to put their hand up. And you'll find that the more you understand, the more enjoyable studying that topic further will become. So make sure that you ask for help so you do have a good understanding and that studying for your upcoming exams becomes as easy as possible um, and not something that you're going to be dreading. You guys are all going to be fantastic in your A-level chemistry exam and all the other exams that you're going to be sitting. If you watch this far, that just goes to show that you're willing to put effort into achieving this goal that you have. So I'm sure sure that is going to be fruitful. Please consider subscribing and watching some of my other videos on similar topics. You might find them helpful as well. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.